Outrocast. Is that Darren? That it is. Is this Mr. Ed Bigley Jr.? Call me Ed, my friend. How are you, buddy? Fine yourself there, Ed. Very good. I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. You've been in so many of my favorite TV shows and movies over the years. I don't know many actors I've seen in more things than you. So getting I'm very the- lucky. I'm aware of how lucky I am. I tell you, anybody who's been working 54 years this steadily in any business, selling storm door equipment, you know, garage door openers, used cars, whatever, anybody 54 years in a business should be grateful. And I sure am. Yeah, I was thinking about it. Are you the first famous actor to come out of the Buffalo area? Because nowadays you see a lot of people from Buffalo. Now, I, that is something that is out there. I think even on my Wikipedia page somehow, I went one year to uh, school in Niagara Falls in Lewiston, New York, right near Buffalo there. But I, I didn't really grow up there. I just spent one wonderful year there and loved it. But somehow they have me as being from Buffalo. And that's fine. It's a fine town. I've started this off with an error. So let's move it along. No, here. not your error. It's out there. I have to get somebody to change my Wikipedia page. Well, got it. Well, Reboot Camp is the latest project from you that I'm aware of. I thought it's hilarious. It is not your first mockumentary, to say the least. When did you film it? When did you get on board with the project? I think it's a year and a half to two years now. David Lipper is a dear friend of mine and my wife, Rochelle, and my wonderful wife, who's brought me many great things, uh, brought me this project. And so we got to do it together. It's always fun to work with her. So that was a good time. And uh, I've always a wonderful director and it, it was a treat to do. I love David and the whole experience was joyous. There is, without giving away too much of the premise, there is a phrase that said during one of your scenes, word diet. Was that improv? Yeah, that was somebody's improv. I don't know who's not. I'd love to take credit, but I cannot. I must not. That was funny, but it wasn't me. Yeah, I get the vibes that it's almost like Kerbner enthusiasm where you know what the premise is, you know where you need to move the story, but it was up to the actors to improvise, move the scene along, and then it was edited down or chopped down. Do I have that correct? Yes. And uh, I've had some fun doing that over the years with wonderful Chris Guest and his team. And so I uh, got to do it with this gang and it was, it's great fun. It's basically like being a musician and you have a chord chart, you know, it's in the key of G minor and you just play and, you know, try to stay within that framework and, and then you get to have fun from there. And in the past, I've been in Best in Show, Mighty Wind, those Chris Guest movies. So it's something I've had the pleasure of doing more than once. I do want to ask you about that in a minute, but keeping it on still reboot camp for a little bit here. You mentioned knowing David before being in this film. And this film has so many famous people, yourself included, in this movie. Did you work with anybody else before being cast in this film? The great David Keckner is a dear friend of mine, a brilliant improv actor, a brilliant actor in any way you would describe it. Eric Roberts, Eliza, you know, two dear friends, wonderful actors and producers. I love seeing them and working with them. So everything about it was a treat. And David Lipper, I know and love. So we were on board instantly. Got it. But not Ja Rule. You never met Ja Rule before this one? No, it was my pleasure to meet and, and work with. So it was a treat. Yes. Now, you mentioned being in multiple Christopher Guest movies, and the first one I saw you in is This Is Spinal Tap. It's a great cameo role. Do you play drums or did you learn drums for that role? I had been a drummer for many years. I played actually when I went to school near Buffalo. The first time I started to play drums was in the, uh, the marching band. It was a military school. I went there. My dad was off with his new wife. He had a new bride. And so his stepchildren, my sister and I went to schools and I figured I'm in big trouble now. It's a triple crown of repression, a Catholic military boarding school. I'm dead. And, but I, it turns out I loved it. I had the best year of any, any of my education at still on Agra. It was a great school. They taught science. The teachers were wonderful. I made PSC right away. I liked marching around with a wooden gun in the snow. <laughs> you know, it was, it was all great for a 13 year old. And I, I had a ball there. I have a, a dear place in my heart for that. And, and so, uh, yeah, I, I love it. But you just mentioned you, you drum and have drummed. Was music ever your 
almost going to be your career rather than acting? Yeah, when I came back to California where I was born and pretty much raised there, raised out on Long Island and in Van Nuys, California, uh, I came back here and I started a garage band with some friends, my friend Rick Diamond and I, uh, and some other friends started this garage band. We played at junior high schools in the LA area in the San Fernando Valley. And so I had a drumming past and I, there was a fellow, Kerry Zier, and we had a band and played together over the years. We played at Don Drysdale's dugout in 1969 for New Year's Eve and in walked Sonny and Cher. That was their, their New Year's Eve in 1969 going into 1970 was being at Don Drysdale's dugout. We were the, the band for the evening there. So uh, when I got asked by Chris Guest to play the drums in Spinal Tap, I had a certain amount of drum, drumming skills at that point and put them to use. You just mentioned Sonny and Cher, and the small world of this is Chaz Bono is in Reboot Camp. Exactly. I love Chaz, and it was a treat to work with Chaz, and, uh, you know, I've met Chaz more than once, so uh, that was a, another pleasure of being there. Great people involved in this film, and I loved every minute of it. You just mentioned Long Island. I'm dialing in from Long Island. One of my obsessions is people from Long Island. I never knew you were a Long Islander. Where, are you, uh, where do you have roots out here? Merrick. I grew up in Merrick. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I grew up in Belmore. So you went Oh my to God. Calhoun? You're too young to remember the Belmore Diner, but there used to be a diner there. I don't know if it was around when you were quite young, but it was it was great. We'd go there for dinner often. So Rockville Center, Baldwin, Freeport, Merrick, Massapequa, Massapequa Park, change for Lindenhurst and Amityville. I remember a few of the stops, I think. You know the Babylon line uh register That's right. right there. That's incredible. That's right. Yeah. The, the Belmore Diner, I believe you're talking about, was the Belmore Townhouse, and it was there till the mid-90s. Wow. Okay. Uh, so Van Nuys and Long Island. When you grew up in Merrick, nowadays I could name 15 people from Merrick that made it, like Debbie Gibson and Ben and right. Jerry and Lindsay Lohan. Yep. Was there anyone else from Merrick that pursued entertainment? when you were there or did they just think you were the weirdest person in the world for trying to gravitate towards that? They probably thought I was pretty weird, but my dad was an actor, so it wasn't that weird. I just wanted to do what my dad did. I think if he had been a plumber, Darren, I'd be fitting pipe now. I love my dad and I wanted to be like him. And so I pursued it, but it's interesting to note that I had no training and no skills. So imagine the son of a plumber saying, I want to ride in the truck today. I'm ready to do some plumbing around a house. You know, when you kind of fit the pipes together, right? Is that how it works? You have to train, you have to apprentice and what have you. And finally, when I got some training, I went to some classes. Then I began to work. I went on a number of job interviews as a young man with no training. I got nothing, of course. I had no idea what I was doing. I started to train and, and that's when it started, of course. I suspect that you do know a lot about cars watching you on Jay Leno's garage and hearing you a bunch of times on Adam Carolla's podcast. So I'm sure you could have been a plumber if you wanted to be a plumber. I, I like working with my hands and I'm pretty handy uh, electrically. Uh, I'm fairly adept. Plumbing, I'm okay at. Uh, carpentry, I'm pretty good at. I made my dining room table in a chef's of drawers with dovetail joints. So I have a certain amount of skills in the carpentry department too. I love to make like, like Jay does and like, uh, you know, Adam does. I, you know, I love to make things. I love to work with my hands. Yeah. Well, very rarely do you have a mechanical person that's also an environmentalist. And you're maybe the first actor I was really aware of that was pursuing environmental causes and being cool about it at the same time. Did that ever had to, uh, did that ever lead you to turning down work because the thing was against your agenda? Yeah, there was some, there's some projects in the past that had a message that I was just not on board with, you know, violence against women and other things that just didn't uh, appeal to me. So I turned down a few projects, but for a while in the nineties, I got turned down a lot. People were just scared of me. They thought I was gonna yell at them for climbing out of a limo or into a limo or something. And I, I'm not judgmental at all. I really am not. If I judge people by their houses or their cars, I wouldn't have any friends. So I don't do that. I don't judge. I just do what I do. And if other people want to do it, that's wonderful. But I finally learned that I was, I wasn't, ever blacklisted, I don't think, but I was just like, yeah, it'd, it'd be fine for that part. Who else you got? They were afraid that I'd make trouble or what have you on the set. So it was a challenge in the 90s and people started to get more comfortable when they realized I wasn't gonna shut them down for not having enough recycling bins. 
interestingly, that question came to me from a friend who's from Merrick named Joe Hassan. So I guess Merrick does make the world go round. But, yep. uh, this movie, it's new to me. It's not new to you because you filmed it a year and a half or so ago. Before I ask you about other upcoming projects, is it true that Reboot Camp was filmed at Frank Sinatra's house in Woodland Hills? That is true. I was not aware that was a home of his for a while. I know he lived... Uh, you know, in Beverly Hills for many years, but apparently he had another home uh, there in those hills up, you know, in Canoga Park, Chatsworth, Woodland Hills, that area there. And it was a beautiful home with a beautiful view. So I can see why he would, he and Barbara would live there. It's a lovely, lovely home, lovely home. Was that the house that had the doormat that Don Rickles has photographed that said, go away when you got to the door? I didn't see that doormat, but I don't, I don't, uh, deny that that's a possibility. I got to be very good friends with Don and with Barbara Rickles. They were, Barbara's still around, a lovely lady. Yes. And Don, I knew, and we spent time with him over the years. I uh, just loved him. He was a great comedian and a dear friend. One of the things that amazed me, I got to interview Don Rickles when I was 18 or 19 years old, was how he could quickly turn on and off the character. Which right. is amazing because most actors, I find, they're still, if they're method especially, they not only can't turn it off, but if they turned it off, it would still take minutes to hours. He did it on a dime. Now, in your case, I don't think you're, you're method, correct? You're, you kind of go in and out very easily? I do a fair amount of technical work, you know, things like that. And, but I also, you know, use some inner monologue and some subtext and conjure up feelings. I kind of, like my dad did, I use a mix of both. You know, he worked with Ilya Kazan, so you're allowed to do things technically that maybe you weren't always weren't <clears throat> deeply rooted in your past or some emotion. Uh, familiarize yourself with those techniques, but also emotions can be your friend on many occasions, of course. And so when I'm able to draw upon that, I do. But it's not a case where let's say you're playing a character named Robert, where everybody has to call you Robert for the next three months. Right. And that, and that stuff, though, for me, may not be the way I work. I certainly admire the people. I know Daniel Day-Lewis a little bit. I've gotten to meet him. And that's what he needs to do to do what he does. I'm all for it because yeah. I haven't that skill set. You know, I, I can't do what Joaquin Phoenix does. You have yeah. talent that big. They want to become their characters. I say, please and thank you. <laughs> I mean, they're just impressive what they do. It's a whole nother way of working that's uh, extraordinary. You love your life, so you don't exactly want to turn it off and stop being at Bagley Jr. the second that, <laughs> that you're not on the clock. So I'm working for me. For my skill set, it works just fine what I get to do and a mass to do. Exactly. And besides this film, besides your acting in general, you've written three or four books, I believe, at this point that have done well. You've got the environmental causes. Is there anything else that's coming up that you want us to know about or that we should be keeping an eye out for besides Reboot Camp? There's a couple that I've signed an NDA on, a movie and a TV show, a very popular TV show that's coming back for another season and I'm on that, but they made me swear not to talk about it and a, a movie with a lot of A-list stars I just did that I sadly cannot talk about, but I can certainly talk about Young Sheldon. That's on for another season that's airing right now, it's showing now, and I love that show and I've gotten to be part of that several seasons now. Uh, that's a, a fine show. And I got to do Mr. Mayor and uh, yes. do Arrested Development on occasion. And I'm just blessed to be still working with my friends like Ted Danson and Larry David and, and that wonderful kid Ian on Young Sheldon and, and Annie Potts. I just look forward to every day I get to work with them. Yeah, it's amazing that we can't pigeonhole you to a certain kind of role. You can do comedy, you can do drama, you can improvise, et cetera. So credit to you doing what you do. And do you have time for two quick questions and then you're a free man? Sure. Okay. This I couldn't figure out. I know now that you have this musical background, but do you have a favorite band of all time or a musical artist? The Beatles. You know, I just love the Beatles. They're, I suppose, my favorite band, but I'm also very good friends with Don Henley. And it's hard not to love the Eagles and Don Henley. He's a dear friend and a great musician, great songwriter. Tom Waits is a dear friend of mine. And I've recently gotten to know the wonderful, incredible songwriter and talent and great singer, Taylor Swift. I'm a huge fan of her. She's a great, great songwriter, in my opinion, and a great performer. So 
I'm very lucky to know these people and to work with them and, and have known many of them for, for decades. And uh, I'm just blessed to know musical talents in yeah. that realm. For sure. Well, the closing question, any last words for the kids? Yes, if you want to be an actor, start taking classes and study. You want to be a writer, take some classes and study. You want to play the flute, of course, do the same. You know, musicians play and write songs and actors act and get out there and, and train and get the proper training if you want to do it. And never doubt that you can. Uh, if, you, if you want it bad enough, you will succeed. Wow. Uh, the pride of Merrick. Thank you so much for your time, Ed. Keep up the Thank greatness. Thank you, Darren. Looking forward to those NDAs expiring and seeing what those projects are. Thank you, pal. Outrocast.